my mom and my stepdad wound up getting into a conversation. So I guess she finally got fed up of him putting his hands on her. And we packed up everything like out of the blue and just left. We moved to Houston from New Orleans. And I had my first fight whenever I got off the bus. And it's like ever since that first fight, it seemed like I was fighting every other week. Guys used to come to my house and try to get me to fight one time. And everyone was calling my phone telling me that this guy is out looking for me with a shotgun. And I asked him, so what was up? Why are you following me? He's like reaching for the shotgun on the passenger I seat. And I hit him about four or five times and messed his eye socket up real bad. And so they, I wound up getting locked up for aggravated assault. So all this happened like two weeks before graduation. And I had a full scholarship. And um, I served three and a half years. When I met him, I didn't notice like a temper at all. Like he was just like, he really wanted a family career. So even when I like read some of the stuff that people say, like how he's a mean person or a bad person, I'm like, I see a different person when I'm at home with him. I felt like I lived two different lives. Like beginning, whenever I was younger, I was like, wow. Just look back on it, it was just like so embarrassing and stupid. I'm almost 30, I feel like I'm more mature and living my life like a man, like a real man is supposed to, taking care of my family and just being more optimistic about a bunch of stuff that I do in my life. I just feel like you have to give people a fair chance to become the person that they're trying to become. So I know that he wasn't gonna just be like this perfect guy, but instead of just like sweeping another rug and like, oh no, you're not ready yet. Because I know we all have to mature into whoever we're trying to become. I had a couple of goals that I had set for myself before I, um, I got released. I wound up being a tow truck driver for like a year and a half. Then like one of my friends, I introduced me to MMA. He was kept telling me, like kept bugging me. And I fell in love with the sport. When he first started, I just kind of thought it was like a hobby. I thought he really wanted to drive trucks. But he was like really passionate about it and he kept telling me it was his dream. So I just tried to be supportive of it. You know, this is his job and he takes it very serious. He loves his family. He loves his gym and his friends. I don't care what he did in his past. You know, I just care about the man that he is now. And every day I see him evolving into not just a better fighter, but a, a better man, a better person. And that's what I want ultimately for him, just to keep growing. Bob, you know, he's a um, good role model. He's the type of guy that go the distance for you. You know, he'll back you up. Two, three, two, roll, two, three, two. That's it. He's a, a physical anomaly. I mean, the strongest guy I've ever met. The power in his hands, I honestly can't compare to anything. And like he says, all I have to do is touch their chin. If he touches your chin, you're going to sleep. Whenever I spar, I don't hit hard. <laughs> uh, he says he don't hit that hard in practice, though. He hits. Uh, yeah, I, I felt it quite a few times. But uh, he holds back on me. I'm, I'm glad. I still have on my teeth, you know. I still got my pretty smile. But uh, it's just something that... When you feel Derek, you understand that sometimes power just cannot be measured. My first UFC fight felt. <laughs> and when I'm walking to the octagon and like Jack May trying to give me his serious face and I'm like, man, I'm not even worried about you right now. It's like God put me on this earth. They touch gloves. To fight. Big, big push. Oh. Oh. Sanchez is back. Big right hand that he's out. Derek Lewis, yet another finish. I feel like I fight for my family. It's not all about me anymore. It's about my kids have a future after all is said and done.